Hello and welcome. Thank you for watching my first video on calculus. So today's uh, today's first video, I am going to be talking about um, <coughs> limits and continuity. <coughs> and this uh, lecture series will be um, <coughs> simplifying calculus. <coughs> so before we get into any math, I want to uh, talk about very briefly um, <coughs> the properties of limits. <coughs> so for two functions f of x and g of x, <coughs> um, if b is constant then you can <coughs> take a uh, function b times f of x, you can take the constant b outside of the limit, <coughs> which you can see right here and multiply b times the limit of the function as opposed to in the uh, left hand side of the equation. Um, you're <coughs> taking the limit of b times the function f. <coughs> the second property is basically an additive property. <coughs> uh, you can add, so, so if you take uh, the limit of <coughs> the sum of f and g, you can add the limit of f plus the limit of g, and that'll give you your um, limit. That'll give you the same limit. <coughs> the third type of limit is <coughs> product. So if you take the uh, limit of the product of f and g, you can uh, get the same result by taking the uh, product of the limits. <coughs> so you can do um, limit of f, times limit of g, and that's the same thing as doing the limit of f times g. <coughs> and then the fourth type is <coughs> division. You can divide f by g, and you can take the limit of that, <coughs> and that's the same thing as taking the limit of f divided by the limit of g. And then for, for, for constant k, <coughs> uh, the limit of x as it goes to c of k is k, that's basically just telling you there's no x in the function, so it, the uh, function is not dependent on x. <coughs> and then the sixth type <coughs> is uh, the limit as x goes to c of x <coughs> is c. So the, the best way to uh, approach this is to just do simple examples. <coughs> So the first example that I'm going to uh, be doing is a very simple limit as x approaches 2 of x. But let's do something simple like that for now. So we'll be using property 6 is 2. Now let's add a little bit of complication to it. So the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2. Now with your with an algebra background you'd be able to look at this and tell me that um, as x is, when x is equal to two, th this is undefined because bringing because giving the value of x two two minus two is zero, and you can't divide by zero, so we get an, an, a one over infinity. <clears throat> but with limits, we can <coughs> determine the value of this function as x approaches two. So we can manipulate, we can algebraically manipulate this function. We know that x squared minus 4 is the same thing as x plus 2 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. We have x minus 2 in the numerator and the denominator. So we can get rid of those. So we can get limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 2. Now we can plug in 2. 
into the equation, so we get 2 plus 2 equals 4. <coughs> now, just one more quick, it's basically a uh, definition. Okay, so something that we need to think about as x approaches zero, <coughs> we run into a small problem because we can't get rid of this, and we can't get rid of this. There are a couple ways that we can do this. Um, one of the ways we can't do until we get further on into uh, derivatives. And we will talk about that after we uh, get into derivatives. <coughs> um, <coughs> so, the way that you want to uh, do this is <coughs> basically by brute force. <coughs> so if you can remember from <coughs> basic trig um, as <coughs> the sine of an angle. Let's say it's the sine of an angle theta. <clears throat> the sine of the angle theta, as it approaches a very small number, it's approximately equal to theta. <clears throat> so say if you had sine of 0 0.001, it's approximately 0 0.001. You're going to end up with some error, but to <clears throat> um, a good approximation, <clears throat> that becomes true. <clears throat> So here we can <clears throat> come up with that approximation since x approaches zero. We're not actually <clears throat> at zero. <clears throat> we're approaching it. So we're getting very, very close. We're getting infinitesimally close to zero. <clears throat> then in this case, <clears throat> we can say that <clears throat> sine of x is approximately x. And we can keep the x in the bottom. <clears throat> equals 1. <clears throat> now this is going to become important <clears throat> in the uh, next couple of videos when we're in when I'm introducing uh, derivatives. <clears throat> so <clears throat> um, <clears throat> th this is a <clears throat> very quick primer on limits. <clears throat> um, you, you can uh, view any textbook uh, for any more in-depth details such as uh, the such as uh, epsilon delta <coughs> analysis so I'm not going to go into that and you can <coughs> also go into uh, calculus textbooks for more <coughs> um, sample problems <coughs> um, that that's basically <coughs> how to use these techniques um, <coughs> I guess we can go through uh, one more. I think we have time for one more example. <clears throat> so let, let's try to uh, use <clears throat> one of these properties. <clears throat> so let's say limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 3, x minus 1. <clears throat> Let's try this one. <clears throat> so using limit property 3, we can do limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 3, parentheses, <clears throat> limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 1, <clears throat> parentheses. That's the same thing. Limit as x approaches 2 is 2 plus 3 times 2 minus 1, 2 plus 3 is 5, times 2 minus 1 is 1, so that limit is 5. <coughs> so thank you for watching my first video, um, look very soon for my um, second video which will be 
actually going into calculus, we will be um, <clears throat> talking about the definition of a derivative. And <clears throat> we'll be going on from there. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Please subscribe to uh, Math Is a Chemist. Um, <clears throat> and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank you very much.